All right, welcome back. We are doing Algebra 2, 1 2, Properties of Real Numbers. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to fill this chart out. If you don't have this piece of paper, it's okay. Just draw a number line and, um, and you can fill in all of these blanks. So we're going to go over um, what um, types of numbers, how we, how we talk about different types of numbers. All right, so first what we're gonna do, I'm gonna say like this is one, two, three, four, dot, 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 dot. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, dot, 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 dot. Okay, so this is my number line. Now, here's one um, classification of numbers. We start at one and we go up. Those are our natural numbers or counting numbers. Natural or counting numbers. Right, uh, we just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like, and uh, we don't count fractions usually. We don't say one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, whatever. We don't generally do that. So for natural numbers or um, those, those uh, w w are the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up. Now, we have whole numbers. Whole numbers are all of the natural numbers, or counting numbers, plus zero. So still, no fractions. Doing a lot of writing today, my finger's starting to hurt. All right, so whole numbers are all the natural numbers, including, uh, or with the addition of zero. That's all the whole numbers, positive numbers, no fractions. Um, now, all of the numbers, negative to positive, without fractions, not including fractions, those are called integers. Integers are all of the numbers, not including fractions. So we include zero. We have no fractions, no a over b, nothing, no zero, no, no fractions. Now, our next category is all numbers, including fractions. So that is, those are called the rational numbers. When you see rational numbers, that usually means you're talking about fractions. So yes, fractions are okay with rational numbers. Now, we do have some irrational numbers. Irrational numbers. We can't really put them on a number line because we can't pinpoint these numbers. They are numbers like pi that doesn't really have a stopping place on our number line. It's 3.14 blah, 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 down forever and there's no place that I can really pinpoint it. I could say, oh, it's around here somewhere, you know, a little bit greater than three, but um, it, I can't actually put a point where pi belongs because the a decimal point doesn't ever stop. So um, this, these irrational numbers are non-repeating decimals. And they're irrational, so I put a little sad face by them. And now all of these numbers, all of these numbers are part of the group uh, um, that we call real numbers. Now, we also have imaginary numbers, but we're not going to be talking about them in Algebra 2 till Till later. Well, we'll see them. We'll see them briefly, but we're not going to do much with them until much later. Okay, so let's let's look at some examples here. So I've got negative 23, and we want to name the sets of numbers to which this number belongs. Negative 23. Okay, negative 23 is not a natural number. It's negative. It's not a whole number. It's negative. It's over here. It is an integer. And it is a rational number. So both of those 
Um, and it's also a real number. So all of those, all three of those categories um, work with negative 23. So it's an integer, it's a rational number, and it's a real number. Let's do another one. Square root of 50. Now, if you were to plug the square root of 50 into your calculator or into your phone or whatever, let's see if I can do it real quick. Um, the square root of 50. So if you have a phone and you turn it sideways, oh, why is mine not doing it? I have to be. If you turn it sideways, it gives you a whole bunch of other things here. I don't remember what I was calculating before. If you turn it this way, it, you've got very minimal um, computations that you can do. Is that right? Yeah, but if you turn it sideways, boop, then you have a whole bunch of stuff you can do. So if I want the square root of 50, um, then I would go 50 square root, boom. Now, um, this is a huge dot 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 number. It doesn't stop at five. It keeps going. Um, and I'm not sure the phone doesn't really tell you that it keeps going, but it does. It goes on forever. So if I have a non-repeating decimal, then I have an irrational number. So this is irrational, but it's also real. Now let's look at um, something, a, a different number. Square root of negative five. This one, I'm just going to tell you, it's imaginary. So um, it doesn't fit any of these other categories that we talked about. A negative inside the um, radical sign um, is an imaginary number. And so just know that we're not going to use it a whole bunch right now, but we will later on in the year, we'll revisit this. So let's have um, let's let's do some u tries here. So I'm going to give you a few numbers: negative 185, negative square root of 49, and 7 over 8. You decide what categories these numbers should fit in, and then um, we'll check your work here in just a second. So go ahead and pause and see if you can figure out where these belong. All right, let's see how you did. Negative 85, this one is, uh, fits in all the same categories as negative 23. So it's an integer, it's not a fraction, um, it's a rational number, and it is a real number. So even though um, rational numbers include fractions, it also includes whole numbers. So um, rational numbers just is expanded version of integers. Not, the, not to the exclusion of integers. It includes the integers. All right, negative 49. Did you put imaginary? Gotcha, if you did. Notice the negative sign is outside of the radical here and not inside. Square root of 49 is seven. So this is negative seven, really. Square root of 49 is seven. So negative seven. So that means that this fits the same um, categories as negative 80, uh, 185. It's an integer, it's rational, and it is real. Neg uh, now we are on to 7 eighths. 7 eighths, not a counting number, not a whole number, not an integer because integers do not include fractions. It is a rational number uh, because if I divide these on the calculator, I get what, like 0. 0.6, what do I, I don't know, anyway. Um, it's not, it's, it is a, um, a decimal that, um, that stops. It's not a non-repeating decimal, so it's rational. And it is real. And um, that is it for this side. Let's go on, let's keep moving. Now, we're going to fill out this chart. And I'm going to try to do it pretty quick. Let's see. Um, and then you might have another page on here. We're not going to do anything on this page. We're just going to fill out this page and be done with 1-2. Um, so let's look at some properties. <clears throat> so um, this column is going to be the property name. 
This column is going to be that property as it uh, relates to addition. And then this column will be that property as multiplication. Multiplication. Okay, so um, we're gonna list the properties here and then we'll show what uh, the examples addition and multiplication. First property we're gonna look at is commutative, then associative, identity, inverse, closure, and distributive down here at the bottom. Okay, the commutative property of addition says this, a plus b equals b plus a. If I'm adding something together, it doesn't matter what order they are, they're gonna equal each other, as long as they're the same um, values on each side. With multiplication, same idea, a times b equals b times a. If you took my Algebra 1 class, then um, this is, we did this almost exactly the same chart. Um, associative, a plus b in parentheses plus c equals a plus b plus c in parentheses. This is just saying if I'm adding all of these values together, if they're all the same on both sides, it doesn't matter where I put the parentheses because I'm just adding them all together anyways, I'm gonna have this, they are going to be equal. Same thing with multiplication, same idea. A times B times C equals A times B times C. Doesn't make a difference where I put the parentheses as long as they're all the same values and I'm only multiplying here. If I was adding something, then we'd have a different situation, but we're all multiplying, it's all good. Identity of addition, A equals zero plus A, or A plus zero equals A. If I add zero to any number, I get that number. That's what the addition, uh, identity property of addition um, says. With multiplication, any number times one equals that number. Inverse property of addition says this, negative a plus a equals zero, or a plus negative a equals zero. Any number times the opposite of that number, which is the negative, the same number but negative, equals zero. Multiplication, we're not looking for zero here, this is something different. A times the inverse of A equals one. Or one equals one over A times the inverse of one over A, which is A. Now, A does not get to be zero here. Closure. Closure just means A plus B, any numbers added to each other, if they are real numbers, when you add them together, you will get a real number. And same with multiplication. If you multiply two numbers together, you're going to get a real number. Distributive property, this says, a times B plus C equals A times B plus A times C. A times B plus A times C. That is the distributive property. Um, and now we are actually going to not do this part right here. We're gonna go straight to these examples and that's all we're gonna do um, for your notes for this section. So we're gonna find the additive inverse and the multiplicative inverse. So I'm gonna give you a negative five eighths. And um, here's, an, here's what we're gonna do. The additive inverse 
is when I want to get zero as my answer when I, um, when I add them together. So if I want to get zero, if I want to add something to this to get zero, then it would be positive 5 eighths. So I'm going to add that. So this would be my additive inverse. Now, if I want the multiplicative inverse, I want to know what do I multiply this to get 1, positive 1. So if I multiply this by negative 8 over 5, that'll get me um, positive 1. Should we do that work real quick? Let's do that work real quick. Let's do it right here, actually. We're not going to do a U. Well, we are going to do a U try, but we'll do it over here. Negative 5 eighths times negative 8 over 5. Let's see that, uh, let's make sure this comes out to be 1. Notice how I flip these. So, um, I, well, I, I flipped, uh, I took the reciprocal of 5 eighths um, and made it 8 fifths. I kept it negative because I want the answer to be positive. So, negative times negative is positive, okay, I'm good there. 5 times 8 is 40. 8 times 5 is 40, oops, not 140. 40 divided by 40 is 1. 1. All right, so I have the multiplicative inverse because I know when I multiply these together, I get 1. Let's have you guys do one. 7. So this is the U try. 7. Find my additive inverse and my multiplicative inverse. Go. Pause and do your work. Okay, let's see how we did. So if I want the additive inverse, what do I add to 7 to get 0? I add negative 7. So that's my additive inverse. What do I multiply by 7 to get 1? So my reciprocal of 7 is 1 seventh. If I multiply 7 by 1 seventh, then I get 1. So 7 over 1, that's what 7 is, times 1 over over 7 equals 7 over 7, which is 1. And that is all of your notes for 1-2. Do a good work on the homework.